If you've heard of Elon Musk, then you've probably heard of SpaceX, a company that designs, manufactures, and launches advanced rockets and spacecraft. They made history after launching their rocket Dragon on June 1st, 2020. However, what SpaceX has arguably received even more press for is their mission to set up Starlink. Poised to be the world's most advanced broadband internet system, it will hopefully bring fast and inexpensive Wi-Fi to every corner of the globe. So buckle up your seatbelts, astronauts, because today we're going to be giving you the scoop on these top 10 freaky facts that you didn't know about Starlink on this episode of Super Freaky Science. If you want to stay up to date on our latest material, don't forget to subscribe. If you're in the US or Canada, Starlink will be available to you as early as 2020. Launched in 2015, Starlink is almost ready to be regionally operational. Its broadband internet connection currently covers the entirety of North America, and SpaceX has announced that 2020 will be the year in which North Americans will have access to Starlink's internet connection. Yet once it is available, how much will it cost? Well, although we don't know for sure, in a 2015 speech, Musk suggested that it could come at a steep price. He estimated that installing the internet system in your home would come in at about $100 to $300, and that once installed, it would cost $80 per month to maintain it. And while this may seem expensive to some, it's because the strength and accessibility Starlink allows is currently unmatched. With Starlink involving thousands of satellites moving along their orbits simultaneously, each will constantly beam internet to and from the surface in a given area. This beam signal comes from and goes to a set of four phased array radio antennas, which are a compact, flat type of antenna that can transmit in multiple directions and frequencies without moving around like a traditional big radar dish would. As a result, Starlink is unprecedented in its projected capabilities and is likely well worth the price. SpaceX is launching 60 satellites at a time, aiming to eventually deploy 1,584 in order to have regional connections confirmed by late 2020. And the ability to supply near-global service by late 2021 or 2022. And although it's still not clear as to how large of an area each satellite will cover or how much redundancy it will require, what is clear is that despite it being an ambitious plan, global broadband internet coverage may soon be a reality. According to SpaceX's Starlink website, quote, Starlink is on the leading edge of on-orbit debris mitigation, meeting or exceeding all regulatory and industry standards, unquote. This is because once a SpaceX satellite dies, the spacecraft utilizes their onboard propulsion system to deorbit over the course of a few months, allowing them to return to Earth for reuse. What's more, in the unlikely event that the propulsion system becomes inoperational, the satellites will burn up within one to five years due to their relatively low altitude, which is significantly less than the hundreds or thousands of years required at higher altitudes. As a result, rather than being left as useless space debris once decommissioned, these satellites truly have the potential to be sustainable and eco-friendly. According to SpaceX employee Gwen Shotwell's TED Talk on the Starlink program, quote, this is probably one of the most challenging, if not the most challenging, projects we've undertaken. It'll cost the company about $10 billion or more to deploy this system, unquote. This staggering cost is primarily because SpaceX will need to launch a total of 4,425 satellites into orbit to achieve complete global coverage. And unsurprisingly, that's going to require a lot of rockets, fuel, and cold hard cash. Starlink satellites each feature a single solar array, which is incredibly useful because it enables their systems to be amplified and achieve unprecedented coverage. With this mainly being attributed to a few select features, the most impressive is its unique design which unfolds upwards like a map, along with its standardized solar cells that help make the manufacturing process quicker and cheaper. Yet that doesn't mean that the SpaceX solar array is perfect. In fact, many critics suggest that the Starlink satellites are relatively weak because they have only one solar array. This is problematic because if the satellites were to have two solar arrays instead, they would remain operational and retain some power and redundancy. However, it should be noted that there are also benefits for only having one. First and foremost, having just one solar array is much more simple and cost effective, as it may just be cheaper to repair and reuse a single solar array 
array satellite rather than pay and make it a double array spacecraft. However, there's also the consideration that solar arrays are generally seen as extremely reliable parts, so the chances of them malfunctioning are extremely low. Yet in all honesty, the Starlink satellites will probably still be incredibly effective regardless of whether or not SpaceX uses one or two solar arrays. Starlink satellites have unique maneuvering abilities compared to similar satellites currently in use. That's because these satellites are equipped with efficient ion thrusters, which are powered by Krypton. Now, ion thrusters work by using a charge difference to shoot ions, which are charged molecules, out in a specific direction in order to impart force in the opposite direction. This allows the satellites to not just orbit rise, but to move around as needed in space, and then deorbit once they have completed their life cycle. And with Starlink satellites being the first spacecraft to use Krypton as a propellant, they truly are revolutionary. Interestingly enough, SpaceX installed a star tracker inside of each Starlink satellite. Now the purpose of this star tracker is to allow the satellite to track its own altitude and then allow it to use this info to adjust itself if it's outside of the altitude parameters required to deliver broadband internet access. As a result of this unique capability, the altitude monitors of these satellites require less human involvement and therefore less human error than a typical satellite. The Starlink satellites are much more compact and lightweight than almost any other satellite. This is because each satellite individually only weighs about 260 kilograms, which is in stark contrast to some communication satellites that can be as large as 6 tons. Furthermore, the satellites feature a very compact flat panel design, which reduces volume and drag. This reduced volume means that a dense launch stack can be used and therefore the satellites can be launched using SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket rather than something more expensive and cumbersome. Way to keep it all in the SpaceX family, Elon. Starlink announced that their satellites have autonomous collision avoidance, meaning that they can self-correct themselves. Using inputs from the US Department of Defense and their debris tracking system, this debris tracker hooks into the Air Force's Combined Space Operations Center, where trajectories of all known space debris are tracked. These trajectories are then checked in comparison to these satellites, and if a possible collision is detected, then the necessary changes in the satellite's flight path are made. Now what's interesting is that the images of the Starlink satellite show four disks at perpendicular orientations. This suggests that they are perhaps reaction wheels, which store kinetic energy and can be spun up or slowed down in order to move the craft as desired. These of course would help these satellites move away from any potential debris for a quick while and then return to normal orbit shortly thereafter. Helping to keep the Starlink broadband functional, it is this capability that makes the Starlink broadband superior to that of current satellite networks. While Starlink has unique capabilities, its end goal of global internet access is not unique. In fact, SpaceX has some serious competition for the title of best functioning and most accessible global broadband satellite system. That's because Facebook is currently investing in a project similar to Starlink, which could provide some interesting intergalactic competition. Now to be fair, not much is known about Facebook's project yet, but what is known is that Facebook is developing a satellite in-house named Athena in order specifically to offer internet service to underdeveloped developed areas. As a result, this puts them in direct competition with Starlink. At any rate, we're really glad that you have good internet access right now to watch this video. Thanks for watching Super Freaky Science and don't forget to subscribe.